Thank you for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Mervyn Matthew. Coming up, the first ever Gender Equality Indicators Report for Dominica was officially launched on Wednesday. The Honorable Youth Minister dismisses claims of marginalization and new equipment for the Dominica Arts and Craft Producers Association. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Yell and tell if someone tries to abuse you. Tell until someone believes you and they do something about it. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Thank you for staying with us. The first ever Gender Equality Indicators Report for Dominica was officially launched on Wednesday at the conference room of the Ministry of Finance. The document was launched ahead of a meeting of high-level policy makers who responded to Dominica's readiness to achieve programs for gender equality and equity, commit to programs that facilitate the completion of the Sustainable Development Goals and other GEI indicators, and the monitoring of trends to sustain gender equality. At the regional level, as Dr. Harrison said, CARICOM, in partnership with UN Women, has developed the CARICOM Gender Equality Indicators, which will support member states with monitoring progress not only on CEDAW, but the SDGs as a whole, and in specific, SDG Goal 5, which is the standalone goal on gender equality and women's empowerment, and the gender dimensions of all of the SDGs, because the SDGs are integrated and interrelated. So you measure one, you measure all. The CARICOM Gender Equality Indicators measure 25 of the 52 Gender Equality Indicators. And out of the four countries in the CARICOM region, piloting the CARICOM Gender Equality Indicators, the four are Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, and Suriname, Dominica is the only one that chose to be ambitious and measure the entire global set of 52 Gender Equality Indicators. And that represents a laudable achievement. And, and I think it's important to, to state that it, it demonstrates we aren't only talking about what needs to be done, but when the tools are given and the tools are there, what is done today shows that we can do it. The Honorable Minister for Trade, Ian Douglas, represented the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, at Wednesday's ceremony. These indicators will enable sustainability, for, gen for the generation of specific socioeconomic statistics, including sex disaggregated data across member states in the CARICOM region, as well as improve methodology to measure changes in the status and situation of men and women at the national and regional level. Dominica has produced a report on the gender equality indicators, the first ever in the CARICOM region. I repeat, the first ever in the entire CARICOM region, and that is absolutely commendable. <laughs> this has been highly recognized as a pioneering and formidable effort on the part of our country. The launch of the report today is mainly to present and support Dominica's work to measure and address gender equality and the regional and global recognition of Dominica as the best practice for compilation of gender indicators for implementation of programs for measurement and monitoring. GIS News will bring you more details in Friday's newscast. The Honorable Minister for Youth, Justina Charles, has affirmed that there has been no marginalization of Dominica's youth within her ministry. The minister is refuting claims of marginalization made during the national consultation of the Youth Policy Review on Wednesday, October 5th. We have made much strides in the movement of our youth across Dominica. 
And from the very onset, I want to say, as the member, as the minister responsible for youth, I do not think that there has been any marginalization of any sector of youth, but we look at youth across the board. So when we speak youth, we do not speak of youth with any distinction. Once you fall within the age group, and as Mr. Henry said, we look at all of the other aspects of what makes you a young person. You are part of the process, and you are to benefit from everything across the board. She highlighted some of the major strides that have taken place within youth development. But we will understand, prior to the 1970s, that there was probably nothing much or there was nothing tangible, nothing that the youth could identify with. We were all in the communities and living our own lives and just probably find, finding ourselves in little social groups. But then as a result of injuries and the concerns and the situations with which our young people were confronted, we saw the establishment of the National Youth Council in 1970, which represents the youth body across the island. We saw the establishment of the National Youth Development Division in 1972. And why would any government institute or give support to those establishments? It is because of the interest and concern of our young people. The Honourable Minister believes that the new youth policy must be one that is modern. Youth development, we must admit, is dynamic. And it must change with the world, the environment in which we are. It is obvious we must. Mr. Henry, the National Youth Council and other facilitators have gone across the island, meeting with young people and other stakeholders right through from the 1st of July when Hila Lady started the ball of rolling. And today it is very important. And I sat with admiration when Honorable Jaisaya Binua, Senator Jaisaya Binua, the National Youth Council President and a Senator, when he exhorted the young people to take ownership of the policy. The policy, why it will guide governments in our planning, in our financial allocations, in executing and ensuring that we listen to the voice of the young people. But you as young people, you have a responsibility when this policy is complete to see to use it as your tool to monitor the implementations of the things that you propose. She gave her expectations following the end of the consultation. I am hoping when you plan, in fact at the end of it, everybody should, every young person should try to access a copy of the policy and let it be your guide. So you carry it and you speak with your parliamentary representatives, you speak with the various body or leaders in your community, and you use it as a guide to work within your community and let us reciprocate that across the island. It should not be on the shelf taking those. As the minister responsible for use, I will do everything within my power and I am certain government's full commitment, I want to tell you that government's full commitment is towards the review and implementation of the policy. The Ministry of Trade is elated that new equipment for the Dominic Arts and Craft Producers DACPA will facilitate better production. On Wednesday, the Dominica Coalition of Service Industries, DCSI, handed over equipment to the Arts and Crafts Association, a gift from the Association of Dominicans in the Northeast USA, Adnex US. Director of Trade, Marfan Walter, stated that the ministry would welcome any initiative that can support the association to produce better finished products. The Ministry of Trade is happy to provide support to the Dominica Coalition of Services Industries in the, in the handing over of such important equipment geared towards updating the toolkit of the association 
and ensuring products which are internationally marketable. The Ministry of Trade will continue to work closely with all producers in an effort to continue negotiating external market opportunities for finished product. But you, however, have a responsibility to produce goods which meet quality standards and to do so sustainably. Executive Director of DCSI, Lester Rivier, told members of the association at the handing over ceremony that the main goal of the DCSI is to foster the growth and sustainability of the service sector. He emphasized that one of the association's primary objectives is resource mobilization. We are very delighted that we are able to fill that void uh, to make necessary equipment available uh, to, this, to this association and to the industry, the craft industry on a whole. President of DACPA, Vanessa Winston, expressed her gratitude to the Ministry of Trade and the Dominica Coalition of Service Industries for identifying the needs of the association and providing the avenue to receive them. One of the things that we have noticed being, being able to do different trainings and so forth is that with the right tools, you can actually work better. You can have a better finished product, you can have a faster outcome in whatever you have to produce. So therefore, having received these tools is almost like a God bless for us because there are certain persons that really need to improve in their equipment so that they could make a better in income for themselves and for their families. The DCSI executive director declared that it is also the role of the, the association to advocate for policies that will facilitate further growth of the service sector in Dominica. Today is a clear indication of the value of the DCSI to national economic development uh, because in spite of the considerable challenges that we face, we continue to persevere in making this contribution by the grace of the Almighty God. I want to take this opportunity to express our deepest gratitude to the Association of Dominicans in the Northeast USA, ADNEX US, based in New Jersey, for this significant contribution. I also want to thank the Ministry of Trade, Energy and Employment and the Government of Dominica by extension for their support to date and for their continued commitment to support the efforts of the DCSI. The Director of Trade took the opportunity to commend DCSI on its continued effort to promote local producers here in Dominica. He applauded DACPA for staying together for seven years. Walter pledged the commitment of the Ministry of Trade to collaborate with the association to build a cadre of local producers and ensure sustainability in skilled productions. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Let's have some fun, eh? I'm not ready for your kind of fun yet. But everybody else is doing it. But I'm not everybody else. I'm me, and I want to do well in school. Well, you definitely get an A for attitude. I plan to get an A in life, and then I think of your kind of fun. So what am I to do in the meantime? You'll survive. Say no when you're not ready. Use condoms when you are. Welcome back. After a 16 year gap, Volume 4 of the Music Anu compilation will be released on Friday. Co producer of one of Dominica's most prolific musicians, Connell Phillip, revealed this information at the World Creole Music Festival press conference on Wednesday. The first volume of the Music Anu compilation was released in 1997 and ran for three years up to 1999. Phillip said that his team saw the need to revamp and feature local music at this year's World Creole Music Festival. He says this is the reason they began working on this compilation. We only saw it fit in that uh, we represent Dominican music for the Creole Festival and it has been 16 years that this has not been done so we decided to do something along with um, Donovan Gabriel. Actually it's Donovan Gabriel and myself who actually produced this CD. Um, it features the vocal stylings of Carlin XP and Webster Murray. And um, I must say that that is the best that I've heard them 
Um, in all the times that I've worked with them, they really brought up the bar. You know, um, there are 13 songs on the album. You have songs like Celebwe, which celebrates the, the World Creole Music Festival. You have songs like, um, you know, like Festival, which is like a love song with you and the festival, the Creole Festival. And um, they, they, it's, the, the 13 tracks, they're really good listening music. He gave details on how one can access a copy of the compilation. The music will really is available right now for download on New Music Zone, and also you can get um, this. This is what I call a download card, where you can go to a website and you put in the the address of the website, and then there is a unique code per card, right? And you can download the music because CDs we have to move with the time. CDs don't really sell anymore, right? So. The download card is right there. You go to the website, you put in the unique code, and voila. You know, the, your, your music is downloaded directly to your computer. It will also be available on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, you know, all these streaming and download websites by Friday. And um, it's a great compilation, as I said earlier, and we just ask that you support. The download cards cost 30 EC dollars and the CDs 40 EC dollars. Philip calls on the general public to support local music. The Dominica Festivals Committee this Friday will host the fifth volume of the World Creole Music Festival's Jam Session. At a press conference on Wednesday, World Creole Music Festival consultant Val Coffey reported that the Jam Sessions will continue. He also noted that last week's Jam Session was a success and he envisions a better turnout on Friday. We look forward to this, this, Wednesday, this Friday's event, uh, which will be entitled Boo Your Work Up, where we'll be having the Excess Groove Band and Clint Henderson, another former member of, of Vickers Band, the WCK Band, um, he will be together with his friends, Clint H. and friends, and uh, hopefully Nai and a couple of the other guys of the Booyah genre will be performing, and we hope that Vickers will join us, one of the legendary left foot Booyah dancers of excellence in Dominica. So we look forward to him joining us and all the fans from Global City who will be coming to enjoy this experience on the Bayfront. Coffee added that there will be a twist to this week's jam session with prizes to be won from Digicel and the Dominica Brewery and Beverages Limited. And we also be having something quite unique where the fans will get the opportunity to win prizes from Digicel and from Kubuli Bay and also to win tickets to the festival. It's going to be called the Festival Sing Along Competition. So get ready to learn your favorite song of yours of any of the acts that will be on, on, on performing on the main stage. Uh, so you have a chance to sing a verse and a chorus and have a chance to win tickets uh, as well to the festival and to win prizes from Digicel and Kubli. So all that will be happening this weekend. The last jam session is carded for the 14th of October. Also, a road trip is organized for the 21st to afford patrons living in villages the opportunity to purchase their tickets. Coffee also gave details of the school bus tour at the Dominica State College. Yesterday, we, we did the, the school bus tour, which was a tremendous success at the college. And we want to thank the, the, the many students who turned out, the many winners as well, um, who, who, who won backstage passes, who won tickets and stuff like that. And they got an educational component as to what the World Cruise Festival means to Dominica and how it all began. And we're very happy that we were able to share that. The featured artist for this week is the WCK band, Didi Sepri and T. Miki.
with that news, your tip of the day is next. There is a silent, invisible killer in our midst. A killer which largely goes unnoticed as it plies its deadly trade. Its name is secondhand tobacco smoke, which has a far greater impact on persons inhaling this poison than on smokers themselves. Secondhand tobacco smoke is especially detrimental in public places and negatively impacts our national health as well as public health expenditure. Stop this invisible killer now. Say no to secondhand tobacco smoke in public places. A public health message brought to you by the Ministry of Health and the Pan American Health Organization. The flower honored as our national flower is a wild plant known botanically as a Sabinia carinalis, commonly known as caribod or bois quibe. It was legislated as the national flower along with the coat of arms and national flag in 1978. As an indigenous plant, one of the reasons for which it was selected, it has survived our entire history and hopefully will be with us for all time. It can therefore be said to represent the continuity of our young people. Its hardness and scarlet flowers are reminiscent of our strong, rugged and resourceful people with an ability to survive and overcome problems and Dominica's ability to triumph despite seemingly insurmountable obstacles. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team are moving Matthew. Thanks for watching and do join us again next time for National Focus.